Shut 
Good evening to everybody here and at home. As you can probably hear, we're not the only ones worshipping this <laughs> evening because the pub are also. Um, the pub have a live band, so any background noise isn't, isn't us partying, it is the pub. Um, but everybody's out to have fun and we're here to worship. So thank you all for coming. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Come, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord. You that by the night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift your heads, hands towards the sanctuary and bless the Lord. The Lord who made heaven and earth give you blessings out of Zion. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. God's love was revealed among us so that we might live through Jesus. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Everyone whose love is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this love of God was revealed among us, that God sent his only Son into the world, so that we might live through him. In this love, not that we love God, but that he loves us, and sent his Son for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we ought to love one another. For if we love one another, God abides in us. And God's love will be perfect in us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. God's love was revealed among us so that we might live through Jesus. And we have our first hymn. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me and that thou bidst me come to thee O Lamb of God I come I Stands, I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blood to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot. Oh uh -huh. 
Bible reading then. Bible reading this evening is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the 35th verse of chapter 6. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Oh, look, you've got it doing that, haven't you? <laughs> ah, you can always tell when it's online, can't you? Because it all goes completely wrong. Shall we start that again? Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, 
and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Father, I thank you that um, in everything that we do for you, Lord, there is always joy and there is also laughter. Father, I pray that tonight you will give us the joy and laughter of worship as we sit here and listen to your word, as you speak to our hearts and minds what we need to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. Little known fact is that actually I used to serve in the Territorial Army many, many, many years ago. I was in the signals, uh, Royal Signals, and so um, I didn't really have to worry too much about whether or not I was ever going to go and fight on the front line against the Russians or the Germans or whoever might be uh, uh, our enemy at the time. But the one thing I did have to do was be trained, and I had to go and learn how to be an infantry soldier, which was brilliant getting muddy, getting wet, sleeping on the hard ground rather than sleeping in my little chippy that had electricity and hot water and I could make myself cups of tea and put my slippers on. Anyway, I, I digress. Because if you've ever served in the armed forces, well, you'll probably know that the most likely time to be attacked is either dusk or preferably at dawn. Not because people are tired, not because they're sleeping, but because it's the most confusing time for our eyes. Our eyes just don't work so well during dusk and dawn. They can't focus properly. They see things that aren't there as they struggle to make sense of what's before them. It's down, I believe, to the variety of lighting and shade, to all those multitudinous shadows. Some deep and dark, others shallow and light and everything on that scan in between. Why, why on earth, Paul, are you telling us, us this, you might say? Well, it's because the Bible is sort of the same in many respects. The Old Testament, for instance, is full of shadows of the future to come. If you've ever read the Old Testament, you'll know that the stories are often prophetic in nature. They give a meaning because they're telling the story of God's people. Think about it for a moment. Genesis through Exodus, Deuteronomy, Leviticus. I'm not going to keep going on. But they do. They tell the story of God's people. One story after another after another until we reach the New Testament. And then that tells the story of God's people as it separates off from the original covenant into the new covenant. The new covenant with God's people, with us the Gentiles. It's why we should never just focus on the New Testament, never just focus on the Gospels. Despite the fact that I preach, I'm preaching from the Gospels, we should also talk about the Old Testament. Because if we don't, it's like losing a part of our story. The earliest part, perhaps. But it would be like, perhaps... Um, me telling you the story of my life from the age of 40 and forgetting everything that came before it. That's why the Old Testament is so important to us. Today's story, of course, is a good example of everything that I've just said. In Exodus, God sends manna from heaven to feed his people. It feeds them for a single day. Later he sends quail, but we don't need to worry about that. Feeding them for a single day day. Every Jew, of course, knew this. But in Jesus, God sent a living bread, one that would feed us not just for a day, but for eternity. And that, I think, says something about how valued we are by God. How valued we are by God. And why we should perhaps value one another beyond the material that we do beyond those material possessions of money, cars, housing. We're far, far more important, each one of us, than any of that. Sending Jesus was akin to saying, you, each and every one of you, here and at home, are a part of me. I could no more lose you than my heart or my soul. 
When we are fed by Jesus, we acknowledge our importance to the Father. We acknowledge our place in the story of God and of his people. And I think when we turn our backs on him, we somehow diminish ourselves and we lose the focus that we should have. And if we do that, well, then we struggle to make sense of what's before us. Why are we here? What's the point of life? And when we do that, well, we become those shadows at dusk and dawn. We contribute to the confusion of the world around us and a lack of the love and care that everyone needs, particularly now. God gives us a chance. He always gives us a chance. God doesn't do bad things, but he turns them to good. If we follow him, if we listen to him. I suppose we just need to work out where the good is in everything that's happened in our communities. And we find that good. We can seek to continue it for the rest of our time on this earth until we go and meet with God and he holds us securely in his loving arms. Amen. And I believe we're going to have a hymn if I can press the button. You have done great things, O God, and holy is your name. 
My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour upon his lowest servant. For this day all generations shall call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arms, and scattered the proud, casting down the enemy, no, the mighty, from their throne, and lifting up the lonely. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to aid all of his servants Israel, to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We come to our time of prayers. Lord of all, we come before you today, bringing our hearts to you, lifting our minds and our ears to heaven. Lord, we ask that you fill us with your love. Have grace and mercy on us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as the song of Mary tells us, you fed the hungry. Lord, we ask that you continue to feed those in need, both physically and mentally. We pray for all those who offer help and refuge, to the volunteers running food banks, to the volunteers running aid and night shelters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the generation to come, for tomorrow and for the future. We pray for all of the children in our community. As we return to some form of normality, Give them hope and strength. Fill them with excitement for the beginning of a new school year is upon us. Lord, we ask that you protect all of the children in our community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, we pray for those who are less fortunate than us. We pray for all those in Beirut today as they face the dramatic challenge of not only rebuilding a community but rebuilding their own lives. Lord, we ask that you help them, protect them and walk with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for tomorrow, that we awake anew, to start a new day and a new week. Give us hope and wisdom. Give us love and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those who are sick in body, mind and spirit. We ask that your gentle hands lie upon them. Give them healing and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our church and the churches here on the island. As we face a new way of worship, 
a new way of serving you. Lord, help us to know the way forward. Guide us and the ministry team in their decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we bring our prayers together by saying the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now the Lord of peace himself, Give you peace always, by all means. The Lord be with you all. It's hard because we're still not allowed to offer each other peace, and it's difficult because, you know, we do love a hug here at Queenborough. Um, but the peace of the Lord is always with you, whether you're here at church or here at home, whether you're riding a bike, cooking dinner, or in the bar. The Lord is around us always. Though the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And we have our next hymn. We come to our time of thanksgiving. As the night draws in, we turn our thoughts and prayers towards God. Loving Lord, we thank you for the blessings of this day and your goodness in it. We're so grateful for the gift of life. Thank you for all that you've allowed into our lives these past hours. The good along with the hard things, which reminded us how much we need you and rely on your presence, filling us every single day. Thank you for your great love and care. Thank you for your mercy and grace. Thank you for always being with us and never leaving us. 
Lord, we ask that you provide for our needs, even as we sleep. We pray for your huge grace and favour. We thank you that you never sleep or slumber, that you are always at work, even in the dark of the night, even behind the scenes when we cannot fully see. Lord, we pray for your continual protection over our families, our friends, and all those who we love. We ask for your hands to cover us and keep us distant from evil intent of the enemy, that you would be a barrier to surround us as, and we'd be safe in your hands. We pray for your healing and huge grace to encircle us in every need and for your comfort to cover us when we feel sad, anxious or afraid. We ask for your angels of protection to surround us and our families and friends throughout this night so we may wake afresh tomorrow to greet a new day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And Paul will lead us in a blessing. And God of grace and mercy, fill your lives with peace and happiness always. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and those whom you love and pray for, and those whom you don't, this day and always. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. Let's bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Before we go, church notices, I love them. Um, church is open Thursdays, 12 till 2. If you wanted to pop in, you're more than welcome to. We'll be back here next week at 5 o'clock. And the church picnic's coming up. The information will be on the screen after this, but feel free to come along. We'll socially distance, we'll have hand sanitizer and everything you need. You just need to bring your own food and we'll have fun. And then we'll come over after that and have a service. Thank you all very much for joining us.